Property bindings simply means you're passing data from the component class and setting the value of a given element in the view. So property binding is one way in that the data is transferred from the component to the view. So the benefit of property binding is that it allows you to control the element property values from the component and change them whenever needed. So let's take a closer look at property binding based on the previous lesson from this course. So in the console, go ahead to that folder if you don't already have it running and run ng serve. And in our code editor, I'm using Visual Studio Code, go to your app.component.ts file. And this is the template information that we had from the previous lesson. So I'm just going to remove this right here and this property right here. Okay, so there are really three ways to define a property binding in Angular. So the first way, and I'm just going to copy and paste all of these just to show you real quickly. All right, so the first way, which I'll outline right here, is through interpolation to define the value. And you could do this as long as the value that you're defining is a string. Now, if it's not, such as like a Boolean, then you must use the method two or three, which are right here and here respectively. All right, so additionally, the most common method of defining a property binding is by wrapping the brackets right here around an element attribute and binding it to a component property right here. And then also another way of achieving this is just to prepend here bind hyphen right behind the element attribute name, which is source, and then also binding it to a template expression, which is usually a component property. All right, so to make this work, all we have to do is define this Angular logo property right here in the component class. So to do that, Angular logo equals and I'm simply going to link to an official Angular PNG file like this. We'll save it. And we'll see that it shows all three logos because all three methods will work for property binding. So another common use case for property binding is on an input element's disabled attribute. And it allows you to control when a given input element should be enabled or disabled. So let's go ahead and add the following template. Let's go ahead and get rid of this right here. And we'll add it on a button. Disabled, so this is property binding, equals, and we'll bind it to a component property called button status, which could either be true or false. And we'll name it my button here. And then come over here, we'll remove this, and simply put in button status equals true. So we'll save that, we'll go back, and we could see that because button status is true, the disabled attribute is applied to the button, so we cannot click it. So if we change it to false real quickly, and then go back, we'll see that we can now click it. And if we viewed the DOM right now, we'll see that disabled would not be added to button. Okay, so we can also real quickly change the template expression to equals and some string. So we'll just say enabled. We'll change button status here to enabled. And we'll see now it becomes disabled because it, the template expression evaluated to true right here. All right, so that in a nutshell is how property binding works. So to recap, property binding allows you to define element attribute values from the component class. And it is also one way data binding as you can only set data from the component to the view. All right, so in the next lesson, we're gonna take a look at Angular 4 event binding.